So you're saying whatever they're, you're finding on Venus indicates a very old form of life, not a <clears throat> new form of life. Yeah, the way it looks is that this gas that's been created called uh, phosphine gas, there's enough phosphine gas there that uh, the supply has to be quite abundant enough to continue to replace what's there in the atmosphere already. So it would indicate the possibility. I mean, if this is a biological source, it would suggest that this form of life may have been around for quite some time, for quite some time. In the late 1960s, the Soviet Union was the master of secrecy, particularly when it came to their daring exploration of Venus, a planet shrouded in thick clouds and plagued by deadly pressure. Despite their remarkable endeavors, the Soviets guarded their discoveries about Earth's enigmatic sister planet with absolute discretion. Fast forward 62 years after, the dissolution of the Soviet Union and some clandestine snapshots from their Venusian expeditions are slowly emerging, sending shockwaves through the scientific community. The burning question is, what do these covertly captured images reveal that has experts on the edge of their seats? Moreover, what other enigmatic findings did the Soviets unearth during their Venus missions, concealed in the shadows of classified information? It's a mystery that has left some wondering if there might be more to the story possibly involving extraterrestrial encounters. So dear intergalactic enthusiasts, welcome to Spaceverse. Join us on a cosmic journey as we delve into the captivating tale of why these declassified Venusian snapshots have ignited a frenzy among experts shedding light on secrets buried for decades by the Soviet Union. So let's begin. It felt as if a fresh duration of the Cold War had ignited, but this time, the battleground extended far beyond Earth's borders into the vast expanse of outer space. The United States and the Soviet Union were locked in an intense rivalry, each determined to outshine the other on the cosmic stage. The opening salvo was fired by the Soviets when they accomplished a groundbreaking feat in October 1957 with the launch of Sputnik, the humanity's inaugural artificial satellite. This achievement was just the beginning as subsequent blows followed in quick succession. The Soviet Union celebrated milestones, such as sending the first living creature into Earth's orbit and achieving the first rocket ignition within Earth's orbit. They went on to claim the distinction of landing the inaugural man-made object on the moon and dispatching the first woman into the vast expanse of outer space. And the United States didn't hesitate to respond by forming its own space agency, NASA, in pursuit of cosmic supremacy. Their response was marked by historic accomplishments, including the first American to orbit the Earth, and most notably, the landmark achievement of a human setting foot on the moon during the Apollo 11 mission. This triumphant lunar landing marked a significant victory in the ongoing space race, the rivalry escalated as NASA continued to strive for more ambitious missions and advanced technological achievements all aimed at eclipsing their Soviet counterparts. However, amidst this intense competition, the Soviet Union decided to raise the stakes even higher by turning their gaze towards Venus, Earth's enigmatic sister planet. At that juncture, the global scientific community possessed scant knowledge about Venus recognizing it primarily for its similar size to Earth and its perilous atmospheric conditions. The mysteries surrounding this neighboring planet piqued the Soviets' curiosity, and they resolved to be the pioneers in unraveling its enigmas. Thus, the ambitious Venera mission was conceived. The Venera mission was an unyielding quest to uncover the secrets of Venus, but it was an undertaking fraught with formidable challenges. Landing a human on Venus was deemed virtually impossible due to the planet's crushing atmospheric pressures and the presence of hazardous gases like sulfur. Undeterred, the Soviets opted to dispatch unmanned spacecraft to this foreboding world. A daring feat that if successful would establish them as pioneers in a league of their own. With meticulous planning, the Soviet space program birthed the Venera 1 in a matter of months, culminating in its launch in 1961. However, fate had other plans, as Venera 1 missed its rendezvous with Venus by a staggering 62,000 miles, cutting off all communication with the probe. This setback spurred the Soviets to regroup and four years later unveil Venera 2, which embarked on its journey on November 12, 1965. Yet, akin to its predecessor Venera 2 merely grazed past Venus, leaving the scientists of the USSR in the dark. The probe possessed the necessary tools to record and preserve invaluable data, but alas, it fell silent as it neared Venus ultimately leading to its official declaration of disappearance on March 4, 1996. 
Subsequent investigations revealed that Venera 2 had succumbed to overheating and technical malfunctions, adding to the intrigue and challenges of exploring this enigmatic planet. In addition to its core capabilities, Venera 4 boasted an impressive array of scientific instrumentation, including a barometer, magnetometer, altimeter, density gauge, gas analyzers, cosmic ray detectors, two thermometers, and charged particle traps. The intensity of the space race during that era left both the United States and the USSR unwilling to admit any form of failure. Consequently, despite the landmark achievement of Venera 3 as the first man-made object to impact another planet's surface, the Soviet desire for further glory led to some embellishments surrounding the Venera 4 mission. The intricacies of Venus's complex atmosphere posed a formidable challenge for Soviet scientists trying to determine whether Venera 4 had successfully touched down. Initial data suggested it was roughly 16 miles above the surface when data transmission commenced. However, subsequent investigations revealed a surprising twist. The spacecraft had actually started sending data from a much higher altitude, approximately 30 miles above the Venusian terrain. It became evident that Venera 4 had not safely reached the ground intact. Although this crucial detail remained concealed by the USSR until a later revelation when Venera 7 accomplished an unambiguous and gentle landing on Venus. Venera 7 stands as a crowning achievement of the Soviet space program, setting a precedent for all subsequent missions. Before the triumphant arrival of Venera 7, the USSR had launched two missions, Venera 5 and 6 in 1969. While these missions yielded valuable data, they fell short of achieving a landing on Venus. Venera 7 however etched its name in history when it officially touched down on the Venusian surface on December 15, 1970. The question of how this spacecraft managed what had eluded its predecessors finds its answer in the realm of advanced technology. Venera 7 was meticulously designed to endure the harsh conditions of Venus, withstanding pressures of up to 18 megapascals and temperatures reaching a scorching 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. Although the actual Venusian temperature was lower, the Soviet engineers opted for utmost precaution. This advanced craft also boasted an impressive array of scientific instruments, including accelerometers, sensors, and radar systems. A critical component that facilitated Venera 7's gentle landing was its trusty parachute, which unfurled at an altitude of about 60 kilometers above the surface. Atmospheric testing commenced almost immediately, albeit with a hiccup, when the parachute momentarily faltered, resulting in a seemingly rapid descent. Nevertheless, Venera 7's lander made contact with the Venusian surface at a relatively gentle speed of approximately 37 meters per hour, a far cry from the harsher landings of its predecessors. The robust construction and sophisticated technology of Venera 7 ensured its survival upon impact. Following this historic touchdown, the probe continued its mission by transmitting crucial data back to Earth for the ensuing 53 minutes, revealing valuable insights such as the actual Venusian temperature of approximately 900 degrees Fahrenheit and an atmospheric pressure of 9 megapascals. Venera 8 marked a significant leap forward from its predecessor Venera 7. Launched in 1972, this space probe boasted similar instrumentation to its foreigners. After a challenging 118-day journey from Earth to Venus, the Nerate's capsule faced the tumultuous Venusian atmosphere. The Soviet space program, however, took a step up in its landing systems this time. Beyond the conventional parachute, they equipped Venera with the ability to break in midair. This innovative addition facilitated a gentler descent, mitigating the landing speed considerably. Nevertheless, akin to Venera 7, the Nera 8 could only endure the unforgiving Venusian climate for about 50 minutes. Within this limited time frame, scientists managed to capture critical data. Fortunately, these dedicated researchers gleaned valuable insights into the lighting conditions on Venus, a crucial determinant for the feasibility of photography on this hostile planet. Additionally, data from Venera unveiled a surprising revelation that the Venusian clouds resided at higher altitudes than previously estimated. Beyond this, the space probe transmitted data concerning the composition of Venus's soil, measuring concentrations of elements such as uranium, thorium, potassium, and other components akin to those found in Earth's soil. The Venera 7 and 8 missions constituted pivotal milestones in Soviet space exploration. It remains astonishing that these human-engineered devices not only navigated Venus's formidable clouds and searing heat, but also achieved successful landings. 
analyzing the inhospitable terrain before succumbing to the harsh environment. Consider that all of these achievements unfolded in the 1970s using technology that pales in comparison to our contemporary capabilities. The Soviet Union undeniably emerged as a formidable rival to the United States in the space race. However, their appetite for discovery was insatiable leading them to set their sights on Venus yearning to unveil its enigmatic visage. Enter the Venera 9 to 12 missions, each equipped with cameras embarking on a quest to capture glimpses of the scorching rocky realm that was Venus. While their photographic endeavors yielded limited results, the images unveiled a hostile treacherous landscape that Venus had concealed from astronomers for centuries. The pictures showcased rocky vistas, impact craters and extensive plains, blanketed with ancient lava flows. Not a drop of water graced Venus's desolate surface, affirming that this planetary sibling bore no resemblance to Earth. Indeed, Venus presented an insurmountable barrier to sustaining life. Recognizing this harsh reality, the USSR embarked on further exploratory ventures. Missions 13 to 14 extended their efforts beyond mere photography delving into wind speed observations. The final pieces of this cosmic puzzle materialized in the form of the Venera 15 and 16 missions, launched in June 1983. These formidable probes each weighing approximately 9,000 pounds reflected the culmination of Soviet expertise. By this juncture, landing on Venus was no longer a primary objective. Instead, Venera 15 and 16 were engineered to orbit Venus their sophisticated instrumentation capable of emulating and enhancing the functions of their predecessors with pinpoint precision. These advanced probes featured specialized radar-based imaging systems capable of capturing crystal-clear images and mapping Venus's entire surface. What they revealed was devoid of lakes, rivers, or oceans, an arid, lifeless expanse. Yet amid this stark desolation, the Venera missions unwittingly unearthed a disquieting phenomenon. During the exploration by Venera 13, the probe intercepted the eerie sound of Venus's wind, a haunting auditory anomaly that raises tantalizing questions about its origin. Could it emanate solely from natural atmospheric forces, or might it be a whisper from an enigmatic invisible presence on Venus? The enigma endures shrouded in the cosmic mysteries of our celestial neighbor. Venera 13, a standout performer in the Soviet space program, exceeded all expectations. Initially projected to endure for just 45 minutes, it defied odds and persevered for over 120 minutes. During this extended period, it captured captivating color images of Venus, transmitted the eerie sounds of its winds, and relayed vital data concerning the planet's barren soil composition. Yet amidst its remarkable achievements, a critical element remained elusive, an element that could potentially validate the existence of life on Venus. Phosphine. This enigmatic gas comprised of a phosphorus atom bound to three hydrogen atoms carries strong biological associations. Abundant on Earth and even detected on distant planets like Jupiter and Saturn, phosphine typically forms in the decay of organic matter. However, its presence on a rugged lifeless planet like Venus poses a baffling conundrum. The revelation of phosphine on Venus can be attributed to a group of intrepid scientists from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Their discovery initially ignited fervent debates as it hinted at the tantalizing prospect of extraterrestrial life on Venus. Could aliens have descended upon the planet following the Soviet exploration, or had they quietly coexisted with Venus' harsh conditions all along? The answer remained elusive. Yet shortly after the revelation of phosphine's presence on Venus became public knowledge, NASA sought to debunk the claim through the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy or SOFIA. The agency asserted that the research was flawed and that no phosphine existed on Venus. SOFIA telescope offering spectral data indicated that any trace of phosphine was minuscule nearly imperceptible. To attain a closer more precise analysis, NASA equipped an airplane with a telescope enabling observations of Venus's skies from Earth's vantage point in the atmosphere. At this elevated altitude the instrument exhibited heightened sensitivity to phosphine. The conclusion drawn by researchers suggested that if present at all phosphine existed in a mere 0.8 parts per billion. However, this persuasive study lacked an airtight alibi. Regrettably for NASA, an unexpected piece of corroborating evidence from its own archives surfaced tracing back to the 1990s. The revelation emanated from NASA's Pioneer Venus Multiprobe mission, 
a venture conducted in December 1978 involving the release of four space probes into Venus's unforgiving atmosphere, one of which carried a specialized instrument. In a recent re-examination of the mission's data, a seasoned expert named Rakesh Mogul from California State University attested to the presence of phosphine. According to Mogul, scientists of the time may have overlooked this gas consumed as they were with unraveling Venus's features and topography. The enigma deepens and the mystery of phosphine's role in Venus's story continues to captivate scientific imaginations. Furthermore, a recent revelation regarding phosphine emerged during the National Astronomy Meeting of 2023. The breakthrough was the work of a scientist by the name of Jane Greaves utilizing the James Clark Maxwell Telescope, or JCMT. Jane, along with her dedicated team, made an astonishing detection of elevated phosphine levels on Venus, surpassing previous observations. The JCMT nestled within the Mauna Kea Observatory in Hawaii is a remarkable submillimeter wavelength radio telescope. This technological marvel boasts a primary mirror spanning an impressive 15 meters, equipped with both spectral line and continuum receivers. It's these spectral line receivers that scientists employ to discern molecules within the clouds of distant planets unraveling their chemical compositions and velocities. The telescope serves as a window to explore the intricacies of the solar system, interstellar particles, and neighboring galaxies. Jane and her team painstakingly scrutinized Venus through this telescope for over a year before unveiling their findings. Their revelation of phosphine lurking deep within Venus's cloud layers introduces an aura of suspicion and enigma. The team posits that this discovery stands as a compelling indicator of potential extraterrestrial life on Venus. Yet, they concede that an alternative explanation for the observed phosphine cannot be entirely ruled out. Hence, the beguiling question persists. Does life indeed dwell on Venus, and did the Soviet space program stumble upon such life forms and veil them in secrecy? It's no secret that government entities maintain a cache of classified information, files and knowledge deemed too sensitive for public consumption. These enigmatic archives designated as classified remain under wraps unless divulged by a whistleblower or officially declassified. Instances of such disclosures have occurred in the past, even within NASA where concealed data or documentaries have found their way into the public domain sparking uproar and controversy. Could it be that the Soviets harbored their own classified documents pertaining to the Venera missions? During the course of the Venera 13 mission, soil sample analysis unearthed traces of organic molecules, an intriguing connection to the recently discovered phosphine molecule lingering in the atmosphere. The prospect of extraterrestrial beings inhabiting Venus tantalizingly looms. Interestingly, a captivating trove of declassified photographs from the Soviet era has just surfaced, and these images might hold the key to unraveling the mystery of potential life on Venus. These declassified photographs unveil the extensive volcanic activity on the planet accompanied by intriguing features such as meandering lava flows, celestial craters, polished rock formations, and peculiar ground channels suggestive of water erosion. The eroded appearance of the rocks captured in these images raises the question of whether water once flowed on Venus's surface. Eminent experts like Michio Kaku have joined the discourse, highlighting the uncanny resemblance between some of these rocks and those found on Earth and Mars. This parallel implies a shared origin or evolutionary history between our neighboring planets. The photographs also spotlight enigmatic dark patches on the surface that beckon inquiries into possible biological activity. The direction of these investigations remains uncertain, but the focus on Venus has waned considerably. The Soviet space program has garnered an impressive reputation for its audacious exploits on this unforgiving planet, and further probing is perceived as a squandering of time and resources. However, the prospect of sending humans to Venus to explore its terrain looms on the horizon is still a potential avenue to determine definitively whether life forms inhabit this enigmatic world and whether it can be transformed into an alternative Earth. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through the cosmos today. If you enjoyed our cosmic adventure, don't forget to hit that like button to show your love for Spaceverse. Stay tuned for our next cosmic adventure where we'll delve even deeper into the mysteries of the universe. Until then, keep looking up and keep exploring. See you!